Hi, how are you? Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. I'm just labeling one of my rocks. Geologists always like to keep track of where their rocks come from. And this one came from New Zealand. I didn't collect this one. This was from a friend who went to New Zealand and got this rock for me. You can label your rocks with a, a piece of paper, or you can put them in a box and label the spots in the box. But I like to use a little bottle of whiteout. See that? And I just take some of that whiteout and I put a dab of whiteout right on the rock. And then I give it a label. Let me show you the label that I gave. This one, I just marked NZ1 because it's from New Zealand, NZ, and it's the first sample that I was ever given from New Zealand. And it's a beauty. This is one of the most spectacular metamorphic rocks I've seen. And it's because of the deformation, the pressure. Look at all that wiggliness. See all those wiggly lines? That's because this rock got squeezed, squeezed tight. Lots of pressure. You can see the deformation, just like if you had a few layers of clay of different colors, and then you squeeze them tight or pull them and push them. They get those wiggly, deformed layers. These are from the mountains of New Zealand, which are very young. This squeezing and deformation pushed these things up very recently for us to find and to see those beautiful wiggly layers in my NZ1 sample. When I go on my National Science Foundation expeditions, we use different types of labels. In fact, I brought one of my sample bags, a white sample bag like this, and we put our, our samples in these bags and then we label them like this. That's a real label from one of my National Science Foundation expeditions. Maybe you want to use labeling like this too. The 12 stands for the year 2012. That's when it was collected. O stands for the first letter of the last name of the person who collected it. That stands for my friend Claire. She was a former student of mine. Claire O was the first letter of her last name. She collected it. MA is a code that tells us the region it was collected in, Massachusetts. Two, that was the second stop of the day. And A, that was the first sample at the second stop. That's how I like to label my samples. This one comes from right nearby where Claire sampled this rock. And I'll tell you the story of both of these rocks, even though this one's not in the bag right now. This rock is from Connecticut. And both this one and Claire's rock experienced something else during metamorphism. Not only did they get buried and squeezed and deformed, but these got heated up. In fact, the story of these rocks is about getting heated up so much that we get to call these rocks ultra high temperature. They got really hot. Now, how do we know that this rock experienced Ultra high temperature! It's because of the minerals that it has and the minerals it doesn't have. Let me bring it closer so you can see. This is a beauty. Can you see, first of all, those nice ruby red minerals? Those are garnets. Beautiful ruby red garnets. Look at that guy. You know, there's something that's not in here. There's no mica. It's too hot. All the mica has literally melted away. The only thing left is garnet. The white stuff is mostly quartz and some feldspar too. And in the black layers, there's a few other things. This kind of rock we call gneiss. Now that's spelled with a G, so it looks like you would say gneiss, but we just say gneiss. And this is what we call a banded gneiss because it has kind of those layers of black and white. Kind of like this one has layers of black and white. This one probably also got pretty hot, except this rock here, I don't think it got as hot as this one because this one experienced ultra high temperature. Anyway, the absence of the mica means it got hot. The composition of the garnets means it got hotter. 
Inside the garnets, there are tiny little needles. Inclusions, like the inclusions we talked about finding in the diamond, messengers from the deep. The inclusions in this garnet are tiny little needles of titanium oxide, a mineral called rutile. And those are messengers from the deep of their own, although they tell us more about the ultra high temperature that these things reached than the pressure. There's one other thing in this rock which is weird, and it's the feldspars. We've talked a lot about feldspars. Remember the feldspars in the granite, like those pink ones? Well, it turns out feldspars usually come in two varieties. The pink ones, which usually are a mix of potassium and sodium. That's what makes the ocean salty. But other feldspars are a mix of calcium and sodium. And granite has both. But there are very, very, very rare feldspars that have all three. It's a mix of calcium, sodium, and potassium. We call those ternary feldspars, and that's what's in here. And you only get ternary feldspars when you have ultra-high temperature. How high am I talking about? I'm talking about a thousand degrees, a thousand degrees Celsius. That is hot, so hot. That's so hot you can even melt most of the rock. In fact, this rock was probably mostly melted. It got so hot down there that it melted most of the rock. So some people say, well, wait a second. Is this an igneous rock that crystallized from molten magma or is it a metamorphic rock that got buried and squeezed and heated up? It's kind of both. It's kind of both. And as we push from high temperature, heating, heating, and we get towards ultra high temperature, we start to cross that line from metamorphic into igneous again. This rock was collected on a National Science Foundation expedition, and we discovered for the first time, me, my friends, Claire and, and Nora and Jay, some of the hottest metamorphic rocks ever found in the eastern United States. No one had ever found rocks like this, rocks which are ultra high temperature before. And it's hard to figure out how these got so hot. They're very special. They got hotter than most metamorphic rocks get. They got buried deep. They got squeezed. They got heated up. But there must have been some extra heat from the mantle or from magma, or from rubbing together, or maybe from radioactive elements, heating things up, cooking them. Whatever the circumstances, this very special rock tells us about ultra high temperature conditions. Deep under the Grand Mountains, as big as the Himalaya, 350 million years ago. I hope you like the story of ultra high temperature metamorphism Silly, crazy announcements and labeling our rocks from Connecticut, Massachusetts, and even from New Zealand. Bye-bye.